Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hey, hello everybody. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. And we're in the holiday season. Just got through Thanksgiving. Got lots of things to talk about. Glad to have you on the show. Let's begin. Well, Sherry and I just made it through Thanksgiving with our kids. They uh, had more than enough food, <laughs> then some. And it's kind of funny because uh, what they always do on Thanksgiving is not only do we have a turkey, but they actually make, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, egg rolls. Because uh, uh, my daughter's husband has got a... a Asian background, uh, and his mother taught him all kinds of Asian recipes. And so, uh, they kind of make that a special thing where they make like tons of these egg roll things, uh, along with the Turkey and all the other traditional things. And boy, I tell you, there's no excuse to be going home hungry. And, uh, of course we didn't and had lots of fun, had grandkids around. And now I realize why you have children when you're younger, but trying to keep up with my little guy was, uh, uh, exhausting <laughs> so yeah we had a great time and uh, uh it was kind of neat because uh we didn't actually have to cook at all we did a, a little we made mashed potatoes over here but the one thing we do every year is i don't know if you guys love it but you know turkey sandwiches are like over the top so we're gonna try we actually bought a little turkey breast and uh we're gonna cook it in our our uh, uh pressurized cooker thing that we uh, have here and I have no idea how it's going to turn out but I hear it's a great way to cook uh, to uh, cook turkey so we'll see what it tastes like so yep that's what we did for Thanksgiving and then uh, talk about a few things that we did during uh, the time off that Sherry had so yeah it gets kind of funny it seems like that it's hard sometimes to try to bring it down a level because you get kind of like Sherry's still doing the nine to five and we have all our routine. So then we get these four days off that we had together. And um, it almost takes us 24 hours to wind it down a little bit. So we actually just sit down and and just chill out. And so it was kind of nice uh, once we got past Thanksgiving to bring it down a level and just kind of uh, lotty dotty around and do little things like take Cinder to, we went to this park that must be at least five football fields long, long, and it was uh, amazing. Cinder just loved it, and uh, uh, boy, it was just kind of, it was just kind of nice just to bring it down. And so we drove around a little bit, and and uh, uh, I have to admit we've been kind of thinking about um, homes down here, and so we've been kind of peeking at some of those too. So. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing serious yet, but yeah, we're just looking around, looking at all the options and, and, uh, analyzing what, what we have down here. So yeah, that was kind of cool. And, um, uh, we got a chance to go visit, uh, the casino a little bit and had some fun there and had a good dinners. So yeah, we've been busy, busy, busy. I did have to laugh that, uh, as we, uh, we're getting ready to go to Thanksgiving. I take Cinder out to the dog park, let her do her thing. And I'd run into other RVers <laughs> between 40 to 60 years old. And almost all of them had the same story that, yeah, they're all getting ready to go see their grandkids and uh, have Thanksgiving with them. So half the RV park, I swear, left the area just to go visit their families to, uh, uh, see their kids and to see their grandkids and so I wasn't the only one and so it was kind of funny I didn't realize how many people are down here just because their grandkids are down here and uh, I think a lot of folks have, uh, a lot of people their kids have ended up down here in Phoenix and don't know exactly why but uh, definitely works out good for grandparents uh, that are snowbirds or just want to come down for the holidays is if they're in cold places like washington state and all the other real cold areas uh, it's a real nice break to come down and see your grandkids in this beautiful weather down here and uh yeah we're freezing to death down here because it's been uh uh like high 60s 
low 70s and uh down here that's like sweater weather oh my gosh so i actually had it, it took a little effort but I actually found a sweater or a light jacket um <laughs> that i haven't worn in like six months and so yeah it's i guess that's our interpretation of winter down here but uh yeah we'll be hanging out in the 60s 70s uh for quite a while and uh boy it's just it's like summer for nine months and so we're looking forward to a great winter and uh we survived the three months of really hot temperatures and and it goes by pretty quick considering you got such a long summer in a sense when you got nine months worth of it but yeah so uh sounds like a lot of people just had a really good thanksgivings and really good chance to see their kids and see their grandkids and that's what thanksgiving is all about and i know we're grateful It's been kind of interesting, uh, you know, we monitor a certain amount of channels and, and podcasts that we like to listen to, too. And uh, it seems like recently I've been actually witnessing a few channels uh, that are RVers that are actually coming off the road, um, not permanently, just uh, going back into extended RVing. And I've witnessed it with uh, one young couple that has a channel, I can't remember their names, and also... Uh, uh, people that we admire a lot, which have a podcast, the Higgins, they've been in podcasting forever. And so we, uh, that's why we kind of do what we do in the RV lifestyles instead of doing the tips and product stuff, because that's kind of what they do. And so uh, it doesn't make sense to have two shows doing the same thing. So yeah, uh, notice that they're uh, coming off the road uh, due to health issues. And I certainly understand all that. It gets really hard. And, and this isn't just an old person thing. It's, it's like the young couples, maybe they're going out for a couple of years and then, then uh, they kind of want to bring it in and start a family and, and you know, get part of that corporate <laughs> lifestyle a little bit. Uh, so, you know, especially if they are thinking about having children and stuff, it's something to say about having a... Uh, a rock solid home for them to grow up in and even um i i'm still pro public schools i know there's certain areas that are uh, questionable uh it takes a certain you have to be a pretty special person to handle doing homeschooling and it's uh it's so important but at the same time homeschooling and um or public schools it's important that our kids learn social aspects of life good bad or indifferent uh, because that's what's going to happen in our adult life. And how do you get trained to be good in it of dealing with all types of people and peer pressure and all that stuff without actually being exposed to it? Um, which, you know, helps hope, hopefully makes you a, a better adult because you'll be tested when you're an adult. That's for sure. Anyway. Um, so a lot of things that happen in the RV lifestyle is, uh, um, you get older and you may start having some health issues and things like that. And uh, it gets to a point where you kind of like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of nice if I'm not feeling very good or things like that to be kind of in your own home and something uh, predictable. Um, and, of course, the older you get, the harder it is to do certain things. Uh, handling a fifth wheel might be a little more difficult. Maybe driving a really big uh, motorhome is not as easy as it used to be. Uh, dealing with trailers, uh, you know, and also there's a lot of folks that have partners and they've lost one of their spouses and uh, that uh, was something special they shared amongst each other and now that one's gone, uh, sometimes it's nice to just make a life change and, you know, if you're a single uh, widow, a widower, um, it my, it's sometimes important that you actually adapt to a new lifestyle and, and, and learn a new way and do things to get out of your rut because it can be very depressing to lose your partner. So yeah, a lot of reasons why people may actually come off the road. And uh, I think most of them that I've noticed uh, aren't coming off the road like permanently. They just kind of like uh, will go back into what uh, most people do is extended RVing which is using their RVs on the weekends or like me and Sherry, we used to use our RV. We'd actually leave it in one of our favorite places and kind of use it like a 
vacation home. And uh, uh, I, I know that I kind of hinted that Sherry and I were kind of considering coming off the road as far as full-time living in an RV and go back to extended because uh, our reason is we can't find reasonable priced uh, medical care um, between now age 55 and 65. Um, I mean, I, I realize when we get 65, we'll get Medicare, but we also have to get a supplemental to help with that, to pay for the other 20%. So yeah, um, uh, it's not a sad thing. It's a, it's a, um, a reality. Um, you know, the shows you see on YouTube and, and stuff like that where people are full-timing, they're actually the exception to the rule. Not always practical for, you know, based on people's careers, uh, based on what their talents or skills are, uh, to live out of a motorhome and keep moving to from place to place uh, doesn't necessarily work. Um, and But there's also benefits of being in an RV and lowering your overhead. So, yeah, I see change happening all the time. Uh, Sherry and I, too, um, are considering that, um, and we tip our hats to, uh, the, it's the Higgins that uh, have their podcast, and uh, uh, they've been on the road for a long time and, and shared a lot of great information, and they're going to continue doing their podcast from their home, and we're actually, if we do the same thing, we're interested in getting a studio set up, and it's just not practical with an RV. And uh, in an RV, not, I mean, uh, the show's about RVs, and, and that's always going to be there. So we're kind of thinking the same thing of just kind of finding a place that's a solid base camp, you might say, that we can actually get some studio work done and a little bit more higher technology stuff, uh, get our quality up. Um, and we have other shows that we maintain, Paradigm Chimes and a music show and, and, and things like that. So... Um, and then uh, we want to expand our business into some other tangible things. And uh, we just need to hold still to do that. And we also need room to work. So, yeah, we may do the same thing. Who knows? But, yeah, times are changing for some of the folks we all know have been on the road for a long time. Other ones are diehards because their whole life is videos and uh, uh, YouTube stuff. But eventually, some of those folks are realizing, like, you know what? It's time time to live for me and not for my <laughs> not for my channel and blog so much uh, um, it's really easy for this to uh, get overwhelming and pretty soon that's all you think about is is your life doing these shows and it's like you know you need to live your life for you and your husband or you and your spouse or partner so yeah times are changing for some of these folks and so what we know today will be a lot different tomorrow We gotta also remind you who we're sponsored by now. We also have our new radio station called Good Music Radio, which is an internet radio station with the greatest hits of past and present. Uh, now it's it's just a great program. It's not oh, it's not focused on RVing. It's it's music, and so what's nice about it is it's something you can take everywhere and anywhere you go. And uh, all you have to do is go to GoodMusicRadio.com. You can download the application to your cell phone uh, from a little link there, and it turns your cell phone into a little transistor radio, <laughs> if you remember those. And uh, it's kind of a neat program. Uh, it's got great music, and what's neat about it is if you like to channel, it doesn't matter where you go, you can listen to it. You don't have to worry about driving under a bridge and, and whether you can hear it. Uh, as long as you can get to internet from your phone, you can get the radio station. So it's kind of cool. And you can listen to it from your PC too. And just go to goodmusicradio.com and just press on the link there and you can listen to the show right there. It's also available through I, uh, TuneIn and it's also in iTunes and it's also in uh, Shoutcast. So there's several ways you can listen to the radio show. Uh, if you have a music player you already have on your cell phone or on your uh, PC, you can just... Uh, Go into the search, type in Good Music Radio, and you can probably find us pretty easy. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's a neat setup. Um, and let's see, the other thing I always want to remind folks is please contact us. I know we were talking about tiny homes last week. Got some good feedback 
um, last week on Facebook uh, and uh, didn't get any like personal letters about it. I thought I'd get really chewed out about it, but I didn't. Um, it sounded like pretty much the things that I was talking about, people already kind of understand or are concerned about. And, and uh, uh, a couple people said, well, it's, it's an RV. And then others say, well, you can put them on your property. And uh, all I can say, if you're interested in the tiny home uh, situation, is really important you, depending on what you want to do with it, really research that. And, of course, if you buy property, you have to make sure that the property will allow a tiny home or even you can, most of the time can't live on an RV on your own property. And it's sad, and um, but that's this reality. So, yeah, and uh, the other thing I want to remind you of is to make sure that you can contact us at any time. You can email me personally at rob at rvtalkradio.com or just go to RV Talk Radio. Go to the little button that says contact and go to the little form there. Nobody sees the note except me and Sherry. And uh, you can also go to our Facebook, um, which is facebook.com slash rvtalkradio. And go to the little message tab at the top and shoot us a note. And nobody sees that either. Just me and Sherry. So, yeah, love to hear from you. Love to hear your ideas, what things you like us to talk about. Remember, we try to stay a little more in the RV lifestyle and RV full-time living and living and extended living and, and, and the uh, different processes people use to do that. And uh, But, yeah, we do cover products and services uh, when we see something that's really clever. And, uh, yeah, so... Give us a holler. We should. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So one of the other things I was mentioning earlier in the show is uh, uh, our interest in a studio and kind of like why would you want that? And the, the answer to that is uh, um, we find it real difficult, uh, lighting wise and and, and <laughs> room wise, to get out some of the reports that we want to do. And not have distracting backgrounds and things like that. So one of the things I'm really looking forward to in the future is getting a studio. Uh, that where we can actually have a permanent uh, green screen put up and permanent lights um, to make it easier to do certain kinds of reporting. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you need a, a new style type of thing where you can see a picture uh, off to my right or left as we're talking about certain items. And... Uh, we also have other shows other than just RV-related stuff. We also have Paradigm Chimes, uh, Check This Out People, which is product reviews. And we also do things for our radio show and uh, some other miscellaneous channels that we're experimenting with. So we're always experimenting, trying new things. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and I urge other people, you know, the, if you're interested in doing this kind of stuff, uh, to look at the, all the aspects. It's really easy to get caught up in one niche. And so uh, having uh, the ability to expand is kind of uh, important to me and Sherry. And uh, we also needed a uh, uh, look for a full-time office for Sherry uh, to be able to do some virtual work when she needs to. And we also have some things that we are uh, wanting to build, and I'll get into that later next year, of um, some products that we wanted to make that are really – the not just RV related. So yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons why we're kind of looking at some office space or, or something different to help us expand into some other areas. So uh, that'll ne that won't affect this show or anything like that. It'll just, well, hopefully for better quality, better sound, better uh, uh, coordination of uh, information. It's a total havoc in our RV all the time with Cameras, lights, microphone system, mixers. Um, we haven't seen our dining room table for a year. <laughs> it's just how it is. And uh, we have a lot of equipment we just hardly use because it, it's so hard to pull out. And when we do um, shows in here, we have mobile lighting that's so-so. But um, to really do it right, we have bigger lights and better things like that. And lighting is important. And then, it, you know, the cameras and booms and things like that we have are just so hard to use in an RV. And uh, so it's kind of, and this is thinking out loud, just to let you know why we're kind of talking about these things and what uh, things we want to do in the future to make our shows better, <clears throat> make them more informative, 
and be more organized. Because <laughs> a lot of times, because of the chaos all the time, we're kind of winging it. And so, uh, which is kind of fun. It's because you, you, you get the real show. It's not a made-up show. We're, I'm, I don't have a script of how this show is going to go. And so every show is an adventure. And that's good in some cases and bad in others. And so um, a mixture of the two uh, would be nice to uh, make sure we hit all. I mean, it's not unusual to do a show, a radio show, and then realize, darn, I forgot to talk about something. <laughs> and I try to remember for the next show, but then I get sidetracked and miss it all together. And uh, I think the big thing that's kind of interesting is just watching uh, the changes of uh, other RVers that are uh, having some of the same issues we are as far as uh, either they're having health issues or there's uh, business reasons to change the process a little bit of their RVing, not stopping RVing, uh, just changing it up. And Because if we taught you guys anything, RVing is a very broad subject of how, about how people go about the lifestyle. And, and then also, it can change as you go. You may find that <clears throat> going from one point to another all the time is just too distracting. And um, some people just do two moves a year. One will be up north during the su uh, summer and down south in the winter. And, and they're perfectly happy with just those two moves. And then there's others that can't hold still for a week. Um, they're just go, 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 go. So it all depends on your equipment. It all depends on your income. It all depends on if you're working or not, or if you're retired, or if you have a fixed job, or traveling nurses. It's all, it's all different. So, yeah. Um, and so as you RV, you'll probably find you'll modify the way you're RVing today, and it'll look a lot different a year from now. And uh, that's kind of what's facing me and Sherry, and it's also facing a lot of other folks that you probably know. So, yep. Even though... <laughs> I know there's a show out there a lot of people watch, which is Nomadic Fanatic. I had to smile because I knew the day would come that it wouldn't be just a one person, now it's two. And Lord knows, you know, and, and, and it's all good. Uh, life could change there too. And, um, and you know, what it looks like today may look a lot different tomorrow. And uh, it will be that way for you too when you get into RVing. Well, we all know it's the holidays, and I uh, brought up in the last show, and I want to bring it up in this show, too, is i uh, love to hear how you like to celebrate Christmas in your RV. Uh, or do you kind of like Thanksgiving? I noticed a lot of people went to family, uh, left the RV park, went to family that actually has a home already, and go see their kids and go see their grandkids. Be kind of curious to see, do you actually literally put a Christmas tree in your RV, and do you do the... Uh, for those that celebrate Christmas, uh, do you do the traditional gifts and things on Christmas Day in the RV? And uh, be really interesting to hear that. So the other thing is, uh, it's always good. I, I did in the last show, but it is always good. To, uh, and I talk about this; it's kind of hard for me. Is living for the now, <clears throat> which uh, getting to the word grateful is. Uh, I I always recommend that for folks especially like me to take a deep breath and ask yourself right this minute what am I grateful for and uh and write them down if you have to <laughs> and, uh, it's a good thing to do because it's really easy to forget because uh, you if you're a visionary kind of person like as you always think about things you want to change but what's good right now and it's like well I'm comfortable and I got heat and I got good food and I got my kids nearby and uh my RV's not broken, and my truck and cars are working good, and we have a boat over here that <laughs> I'm grateful for having it, but it's out of the water right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, Sherry and I have a lot to be grateful for, and she's got a really good job, and we do have these really good insurance because of that, and uh, so we're very grateful for that. And uh, the other thing with this show is we're very grateful for our listeners, and we're very grateful for the notes and comments that we get. We really appreciate it. Uh, occasionally, I get someone that kind of uh, <laughs> knocks the wind out of our sails. But um, usually, uh, uh, like I said, we love constructive feedback. We want to be a channel and a radio show that you can come to that you feel like you know, you're one of our friends. 
We're just uh, shooting the breeze with you as an RVer. I want to make sure that you know all the pros and cons of of coming into this and also all the different ways that people do RVing. And, uh, or you may find that RVing may not be for you. Um, maybe you want to live on a boat part-time. Or maybe you want a vacation home in Mexico or when you travel international. I mean, or maybe you want to do the sailboat thing. <laughs> it's all kinds of things. And so this is... But the things for RVing apply to a lot of those things too, of, of planning and ideas um, You know, when it comes to boondocking or... or uh, some of the uh, technology that all of us use, whether it's sailboats or boats or uh, powerboats or RVs or having a vacation home that or a cabin out in a um, place that's a little more primitive, uh, tiny houses, uh, a lot of things in common. So we, even though this is a particular niche is RV, uh, it's actually applicable to a lot of things that RVers do, have, or may get into. So we hope that we... Uh, contribute to that lifestyle and get you to thinking about the pros and cons of each move you make. Um, deciding if you'd be a person that boondocks a lot, what things you would want to do. Are you a more social person? Do you want to be around crowds? Do you want to have uh, club activities? Even RV parks are really important to pick out what kind you like. Are you a person that loves to do shuffleboard or play cards or play bingo or things like that. Or you people like Sherry and I, we're roamers. We like road trips. We love to go places. And so we don't really care about what's in the RV park as far as those kind of things. And so that's the things we like to talk about is like, I guess the big thing is making sure, are you defining what you're, if you're going to get into this, are you defining or have an idea of what kind of lifestyle RVing or traveling will be for you. Are are you a picture taker? Are you a person that still has a lot of energy, or are you uh, maybe you have a handicap or a health issue that prevents you from doing a lot of uh, traveling? Maybe just the community of the RV park is important to you, and uh, those could be a lot of fun. By the way, <laughs> There's some parks out there they got dances going on, and. Uh, um, and for those of you who really know me, I'm actually a square dance caller too. And some of these uh, parks have square dancing, and some of them have uh, regular ballroom dancing nights uh, and get togethers and all kinds of cool things. So, yeah, you got to find that stuff out for yourself and, uh, and uh, define it and make sure you buy the right kind of, of equipment to support it uh, before you get out here or just get out here and modify it as you go. Who knows? But yeah, I hope we're hopeful to you. And once again, we're grateful for you as a listener and really appreciate all the comments and, and the support you've been giving us every week. We see we're growing a little more and and uh, it's thanks to you and telling people about our show. And the big thing is try to share us if you can. Tell people about us and discover us. And uh, the more people that tie in with us, the more that we modify the show a little bit to bring in different ideas and subjects based on the people that come in and give us feedback. So yeah, we appreciate that. I have a confession for you. <laughs> Is Obviously, if you follow the show closely, you'll realize that I'm late. <laughs> uh, usually our show launches early in the morning. I'm actually cutting this show the same day that we're launching it. And reason being is the holidays definitely caught up to us and we were very busy. And we had some activities uh, in the last four days that kept us away from technology a lot. And we, I just couldn't get the show cut in time. And so it's a short show and I, I apologize for that. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, we'll gives us kind of a chance to clear our heads and I'll kind of share more things with you that's going on in the last week and a half. And uh, yeah, so... This show, I'm going to bring the show down to an end today, and it'll only be a half-hour show, and I apologize. Uh, I do want to urge you to give it, contact us, send us some notes, give us some things that we want to talk about for next week. Appreciate that a lot, and I'll try to be a little more timely. I was caught. I've been caught. I'm late, and I apologize. And uh, 
Um, but we had a great, you know, the holidays were great. Got to see our kids, got to see the grandkids, spend some quality time, and uh, um, we'll share some more things that are going on too as we kind of define them out and make sure we uh, give clear information. So <laughs> I want to thank you for listening. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Be safe and get yourself an RV. Talk to you next week. Bye now.